Good evening, everyone. My name is Fiona Campbell. I'm the Chief Executive of the Association of Scotland Self-Caterers. Um, any ASSC members in the room? Yay, look at that. So thanks for the, you know, the, the shout out, Kelly. I don't think I, you know, anyone else, please, please do join. Really lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for coming along. Um, it was really amazing to hear such brilliant, positive opening discussions this evening. I don't tend to get involved in many positive discussions at the moment, which is terribly sad. And I wish I could do more, but it's really important that we all remember why we do what we do and what an incredible positive benefit we provide to our local community and our local economy. So don't forget, whilst we all have these complete nightmares around legislation and whether licensing is happening or whatever's happening, remember that we've got to think about booking direct. Don't give all your bookings to the OTAs. They don't need them. We need them ourselves. Listen to what Damien says. Go find out what he does. Come to the Book Direct show. It's in Barcelona in May. Why wouldn't you? Um, and also listen to what Kelly's saying, you know, really wise tips. We all have to remember that we need to remember to run our businesses because until we're told to stop at the end of the line, we will have to continue doing what we do best, which is giving our guests an amazing professional quality experience. So I didn't need to introduce myself. That was easy. Quick question for the room. Who in the room has signed up for or applied for a license? Excellent. Who has applied for planning permission? Okay. Who's applied for a certificate of lawfulness? Who's been granted either planning permission or a certificate of lawfulness? Woof, nice work. Okay, so that's four people. Yes, yeah. Okay, so that's really interesting. It just gives me an idea of where we're all at. Really interesting on the licensing one. So I said to Kelly that I'd talk to you a bit about where we are and, and where we're at and, and all the rest of it. We don't have any slides. Sorry, I don't do pretty things. I just talk a lot about very boring things, I'm afraid. Um, where are we? all know that we are now within, in Edinburgh, a designated planning control area, which means that if you rent out an entire property, you will need to get planning permission to do so if you haven't already done so. Um, if you are a secondary letting or a home sharer, you will not need to get planning permission. So that's where we are with that. That is now. Now, interestingly, I can tell you that 349 planning permission applications have been submitted since February 2021, of which 57% are still awaiting assessment. So they're doing really, really well so far in getting through the backlog. But what we need to remember is that 201 properties are awaiting assessment. Let's pause for a minute and think about how many properties are needed in the summer months for the festivals. More than 201. So that's a problem. I can tell you that 64 have been granted permission and 57 have been refused permission. So we're at an almost even 50-50 split. So that's the context of the planning control area. I'll come back onto planning in a second. Licensing, we all know that that's now in. As of the 1st of October 2022, we are now all duty-bound legally to have a licence by the 1st of July 2024. And I'm sure if you're all members of the SSC, you've probably been to one of our roadshows. I'm not going to bore you with the intricacies and we don't have time anyway. But, and I will I'll happily answer any questions that I can afterwards. But... Licensing. The problem with licensing isn't the mandatory conditions because I bet you most 99.9% .9 of the people in the room already comply with the mandatory conditions, which are to do with the health and safety and existing legislation. The problem in Edinburgh is the additional conditions and elsewhere. This is not a problem just for Edinburgh. We have got major challenges in Dumfries and Galloway, Highland, Argyle and Butte, Dundee City, etc, etc. So I'm going around 32 local authorities going, why are you asking for that? Dundee City, here's one to make you laugh. Dundee City, one of the additional conditions is that as a legal requirement, you will need adequate draw space for adequate cutlery for your guests. <laughs> uh-huh, that's right. In Argyle and Butte, if you, have, if you give boat hire or bike hire, you need to make sure that your guests don't drown or fall off and graze their little knees. Really, because that's all to do with the accommodation provision, not. 
So you can see that in, in different local authority areas, we're facing completely different challenges. Now, you might think that in Edinburgh, you're being persecuted specifically for the planning. But I can tell you we've got a massive problem with planning in Perth and Kinross, Dumfries and Gatherway, South Ayrshire, etc., etc., of local authorities not really understanding what they're meant to be doing here. Because what they've written in the leg licensing bill under Schedule 3.13, I need to get out more, is that there is a planning consideration piece within the licensing. So local authorities are able to look at planning as a consideration as part of either granting or refusing your licence. Now, Edinburgh, in its infinite wisdom, has taken that just that little step beyond because obviously now you've got the planning control area. But in addition to the planning control area, which isn't difficult enough, they've added in as an additional condition, which is a rebuttable presumption, which I love, against the granting of licence to anybody within a flatted dwelling. We can't use the term tenement, that's got a different legal meaning. It's a flatted dwelling. So it doesn't mean you need to be in a tall block. It can be anything that has a shared stairwell or any kind of shared entrance. So the problem in Edinburgh is that additional condition. You can cope with the mandatory conditions, it's the additional conditions that are going to trip you all up. And that is our problem. That is our biggest problem, this rebuttable presumption against granting a licence for those dwellings. So where we are at as an association is that we have taken legal advice so far, and I hope this isn't shared more generally to our friends in City of Edinburgh Council, but if they hear it, that's fine. We've got legal opinion to say that they have gone too far with this consideration. It's called ultra vires. It's out with the scope of the legislation. And I've spoken to somebody that sat on the local government planning and housing committee that pushed this through in January um, and said, this is happening. Do you realise that this is happening? Was this the policy intention? And he said, no, that was not the policy intention. I said, well, that's what you've got. What are we going to do about it? So what we now need to work out is whether we can really go fight this. And in my heart of heart, I believe we can. And if we couldn't, I would walk away because I ain't doing this for my health. I tell you that much. So we're now in a position where we've got this, this junior council opinion to say that we have got grounds to go after them on this ultra vires planning consideration as part of City of Edinburgh Council's licensing <coughs> policy, right? So I went back to our legal counsel and I said, right, that's lovely. We could do that, but that would only help the people that have got planning permission. So we called that the life raft option. I then went back and I said, OK, we now need to go and get senior counsel's opinion, which is going to take a lot more clout. It will make a lot more impression. It will make the city of Edinburgh sit up and take note and go, oh, gosh, really? They really are going for this. They've got so-and-so KC to look at this. This is a problem. Um, so we are now looking at the wider thing. And I've been banging on about this thing for an awfully long time. People have been laughing at me since about 2017. I think one of my directors just walked in. She's been listening to be banging on about this for an awfully long time. There's a thing called the Human Rights Act, Article 1, Protocol 1, which is about the ability to earn a living. If you are not granted a license on grounds of license or indeed planning, they are taking away your right to earn that living. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that is not acceptable. So I said to the, um, the team to this, that's instructing the senior council, do we have grounds? I also asked on the basis of the Provision of Services Act. Now, that was a e European EU directive. And when Brexit happens, I remember thinking, oh, no. Are we going to lose that possibility as a challenge? But no, you're okay. It's been transposed over in 2018. We're good to go. So when I had the, uh, the junior instruction um, to legal opinion sought a couple of weeks ago, I said, I want them to look at the planning piece, the A1P1, it's called, Article 1, Protocol 1, Human Rights, and the Provision of Services Act. Do we have grounds? He has come back to say we have grounds for a challenge. First step done. That's amazing. Thank you. So the ASSC paid for that. They paid for that because we are here to represent you guys, and that is why you're members. Um, so now we are going further, and we are seeking secondary senior counsel's opinion. So as of today, 
I have got half the funding to get us there, and I think I've got all the funding, but I wanted to have come to you today and said, we can instruct today. It's now going to be tomorrow, I think, but fingers crossed, by the end of tomorrow, I will have instructed senior council's opinion. And we're going to go all the way with somebody really significant, a really good KC, that's not only looking at whether we can just fight City of Edinburgh Council, but there might be grounds that we can go full throttle to the Scottish Government, the whole scheme, which is really, really amazing. So that's where we are at with that. So what I would ask you is, <coughs> there's been a lot of chat on social media channels about what can we do to help. Now, we've paid for the first council opinion, We've got various people to pay for the second council's opinion, and we're also helping with that. If we go all the way, we're going to need all the help we can get. Now, we know we did this in 2018. We crowdfunded. We got a bunch of money. It was amazing. If, for any reason, you would like to help, please put your name down in the book over there, and we will get in touch with you in due course if that is the right path to go down. So we're not telling you, we're not, up, we're not you know, I'm not putting my hat out begging, but if you want to put anything in, if we go for the full legal challenge, please do, because we're going to be doing it for the whole community. And this isn't just about Edinburgh. This is going to help the whole of Scotland. So I'm absolutely delighted about that. Can I just ask where that legal challenge will be heard? Is it the court session? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. <laughs> Come on. Um, so that's, okay, so that's where we're at with licensing. You, as existing operators, you will know that you've got until the 1st of April 2023 to apply. Um, you've got to get planning. You have to have got your planning application in, in order to apply for a license. In my heart, I would say possibly just hold fire for the moment, just in case we can get things moving. We're now working with the festivals who have recognised that this is a significant problem. I've got an amazing document here, briefing from the festivals, to say it's called a red risk for the festivals. They are recognising that this is now a crisis point because there are companies that are out there that cannot sign contracts with their production staff and their, and their, and their you know, providers and their, all the people that come to Edinburgh until they know whether we've got accommodation to give them. So we are at a point where we're talking to them. They are talking to the people that they need to talk to. We are working really hard behind the scenes to do something here. We're not all sitting on our hands, I absolutely promise you. So that's where we're at with licensing at the moment. Now we move on to planning policy. See, you guys are so positive. Um, there is currently, you will know, I think, a um, consultation underway for the new planning policy. So previously, the planning policy was around um, you may or may not require planning permission. So I had a meeting with them the other day, and they said, we were just trying to you know, firm that up a bit. Has anybody seen the consultation document? Okay. So you've got until the 22nd of December to reply to this. You need to reply to this. We need every single one of you to reply to this consultation, okay? I will be uh, publishing our response to it in the next couple of days. I'm signing that off. Well, I signed that off today. So we'll be publishing it in the next couple of days. It'll be on the SSC website under news. Please go ahead, use any of the points. But ultimately, it's not complicated. They're going way too far. Again, way too far. They're again conflating the issues of licensing and planning. So they're talking about the potential for noise on stairways. Well, that's already covered by licensing. It's already covered by antisocial behaviour legislation. Mm -hmm. There's already existed, and I won't bore you. It's all this stuff that they're duplicating regimes. And then they say, we won't support an application unless it's in a wholly commercial area. So I went, tell me which wholly commercial areas are. Well, we haven't... Well, no, 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 no. You need to... If it's in a policy, you need to give me a, a line around a map. Okay, right. Okay, so if you're in this wholly commercial premise, property area, how many flatter dwellings are there? Okay, so you're not going to let them be out with that area. You're not going to let them be in residential areas. You're not going to... So who can get planning permission? 
Right, OK, I, uh, oh, we don't know. And can you tell me what the problem is? Well, we don't really have any accurate data. Right, OK. So you don't have any data. And what's the policy intention? Well, um, it's, um, is it about getting housing stock back? No, no, that's not the policy intention. OK, so talk to me about what the policy intention of a planning control area is. Can you see where this is going? It goes round and round and round in circles because they don't know what the policy intention is. They don't understand how to, how to implement it and they're just getting themselves in knots. So we need to do everything we can at this point to stop any further planning going on. So my question to them was, you know, how many applications are you going to support on this basis? And so when I talk to MSPs, I say, this is a de facto ban of short-term lets in Edinburgh. And indeed, Glasgow. If you're in Glasgow, you don't have a planning control area. They're doing it anyway. Um, and they say, oh, no, it's not. You'll be fine. You're legitimate operators. You'll be fine. My recommendation would be to you, write your MSPs again. Write your councils again. This is a de facto ban. This has to be stopped. This is your livelihoods. This is not Ben, the dodgy Airbnb operator. He doesn't exist, by the way. This is your livelihoods. This is your professional businesses that Bookster supports that Damien sits there talking to people around the globe about how to build up a professional business, and yet we're being treated as sex traffickers, drug dealers, and puppy farmers. You'll have heard this before. I need to, re I need to reassess my marketing plan, because I just haven't gone there. But clearly, that's what we are. Therefore, I'm missing a trick, or several tricks. Uh, so, you know, we need, to, we need to make them understand that if this is really what they want to do with a combination of licensing and planning then the festival's not going to happen. And you aren't going to be able to have an exemption for the festivals and Hogmanay. So which one's going to fail? What do they want? What's the economic impact going to be to this city and the wider area? I had a really, really brilliant meeting with stakeholders such as Chambers of Commerce, FSB. I had three of the directors from Visit Scotland on the call. And I said, if you block the funnel that is Edinburgh, you're not going to get people going to Dumfries and Gallery or Highlands or anywhere else because they're not coming here. And what are we saying to the world? We're saying you're not really very welcome here. And some of the festival organisers are asking for an exemption for the festivals. So, yes, we think the regulation is required for the sector, but not for that six weeks. I said, well, that doesn't really work, does it? Because if this is actually about health and safety and the safety of our guests, you can't then say... I don't really mind if you all burn during the six weeks. <laughs> you know, that's fine. That's fine. That's not going to work. So it's very difficult to knit all of these different narratives together and make something out of it that doesn't look like something I've knitted, if you know what I mean. You know, it's, it's really difficult, but that's where we're at at the moment. So please respond to the consultation. You've got until the 22nd of December. It's six questions. You just need to say strongly disagree to all of them and then just shoehorn in some of the stuff that I'll give you. It's fine. Easy peasy. But, you know, that's where we're at. Um, I had a really interesting two-hour meeting with the three civil servants that are putting together the next challenge, which is the transient visitor levy. It's not called that anymore. It's called the local visitor levy, apparently. That's going to be another car crash. But you can see that, and I said to them this morning, you cannot see these pieces of legislation in, in silos. You've got to see them holistically, and you've got to see how one is going to impact on the other. And so that is basically my absolute dedicated cause at the moment is to say if you do that then that's going to happen if you do that that's going to happen everybody's seeing that no so it's just really difficult so all i can say to you at the moment is apart from any of the kind of specific questions about licensing and planning is that the ASCC is absolutely fighting on every single one of your behalf and we will do everything everything we can to make sure all businesses are protected and that's really all we can do so that's the positive bit no it's not very positive but in the meantime whilst we go through all of this you need to keep hold of the fact that you're doing an amazing job and we do a brilliant thing for the local economy and for our communities and don't be told otherwise keep reminding your community it says back to what kelly says Talk to your neighbours. If your neighbours like what you're doing, Anna, all of your wonderful properties, 
Get them to write to their MSPs. Get them to write to the papers and say, we don't have a problem with this. Let's try and change the narrative. Because that's all we can do at the, moment, at the moment, unfortunately. So I'm sorry I can't be the bearer of better news, but the legal challenges are positive. We will fight and we'll continue to fight. <laughs>